have uh, essentially a liberal law professor who is uh, not a fan of the Trump tax plan and really uh, has basically the, the perfect uh, liberal establishment resume, uh, summa cum laude from Harvard, uh, Marshall Scholar at Oxford, Yale Law Review, and he was a clerk for Justice Kagan. So, so I think his, uh, his authority on this subject uh, certainly would uh, exceed the times, but so far, no correction. Why do you think that is? I, I don't know. I, maybe they have this on in the newsroom. Let's hope so. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been several days now, and I think it's about time. Well, it's just you know, it's one of those things where if you're going to make up a couple to make a point, the point better be accurate. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Or, or maybe focus on real people in your reporting. Just right. just an idea. <laughs> All right, uh, James Freeman from the Wall Street Journal is going to go upstairs in the building and get to work. Yes, He'll sir. Be, you're going to be the first one in the office. Cool. Unless you hang around for the next segment, if you're hungry. You know him from the Food Network show, Restaurant Stakeout. Now Willie Daigle is expanding his steak empire and treating us to some mouth-watering recipes. Look at that tomahawk! Bill Hemmer's mouth is watering right now. He's upstairs with the news in 10 minutes. They call that breakfast, don't they? They do. That's <laughs> like a Flintstones breakfast. Steve, good morning. Breaking this morning from Moscow, Vladimir Putin with a direct threat at the U.S. What he unveiled today, we'll show you that from Russia. What is happening inside the West Wing after a major shakeup yesterday? Is there a deal on background checks? Senator Joe Manchin makes his case live in a moment. And another report on the failed response in Broward County. Details on that and a lot more. It's a Thursday. Join Sandra and me in 10 minutes. We'll see you then. Top of the hour. All right. All right, you know him from the Food Network show Restaurant Stakeout. Now, Willie Deagle is embarking on a new adventure, expanding his Uncle Jack's steak empire. Is it possible to get bigger? Willie joins us now with some Uncle Jack's mouthwatering recipes, exclamation point, which means yes. Great. All right, so what's the see, philosophy what? behind it? So the Uncle Jack's meat house is like the new steakhouse era. Younger, hipper, cooler, more versatile. The younger market's driving the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. So you could come get your meat game on any which way. Get you can have meat game on. You can have a great burger. Here's our smokehouse burger. Right it's got fresh pulled pork, coleslaw, a cheese fondue. It comes with all fresh pickled ingredients, oh, farm to table, organic. So then you have your lobster tacos, a little avocado mousse. Here we have applewood hickory smoked bacon that's roasted in the oven slow, thick that cut. So beautiful. Just look, Janice, don't touch. You told me I couldn't eat anything. Whose idea is this to put them on little skewers? Well, I made all of these little things. All these plates to made. This is a little magnet and it holds the steak for the tomahawk. So all this is created by me and my team. It's a visual experience. I'm you come there, you're wowed. <laughs> so today everything's about social media taking pictures. Right. Does this look good? Are you going to put this out on the internet yeah. and show your friends? Yes, no. I'm crying because you won't let me eat right. it. Then you have your bacon. And you could dip it in your peanut butter. It also has the sweetness and the spikes with the chipotle. I've never heard of that. Yeah, Who great. invented that? Really? Well, they've got the ba bacon, banana, peanut butter. Sure, you yeah. can dig right in. Have a piece that of bacon. bacon oh, I can eat it. Yeah, eat the oh, bacon. Dig right, right in. The empire okay. bigger, Willie. You want to get the empire bigger? How? Well, first you have to build your corporate bacon. infrastructure. You have you have great people. Yeah. Anyone can build restaurants. Then it's about building people and adapting today's times. Personalities and work ethic. Yes. So I hire people with energy and great passion, and then I'm there leading them, motivating setting them up, structuring, you're a organizing. Coach almost. Mm. Oh, without a doubt. You're a coach, you're, you're a general manager, you're an owner. What's the you're key everything. What's the key to managing people? Is putting so people in the mistakes. right places for okay. what they a lot of people come to me and they don't know what they're going to be. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. They think they're supposed to be this. Then you work with them and you see where their talent is. You wouldn't put, you know, a 300-pound guy at safety if you're playing right. football, right? You sure. put him on the line. So until you see and when you build their confidence up right. and you set them up to succeed, you give them a little rope, don't let them choke themselves, right. you build winners. Willie, I got to tell you, oh my the bacon with peanut hey, butter is actually really delicious. Good. I would yeah. try it again except uh, Janice is yeah. double dipping. Now, here's the thing. You're talking about Instagram. Who yeah. wouldn't Instagram the tomahawk steak? Yes. Tell us how you make the perfect steak for the folks at home. Okay, First so here, here's a beautiful raw yeah, right prime tomahawk, tomahawk steak. So here I have our Jack seasoning. This is a blend of three salts. Mm -hmm. Himalayan, sea salt, and kosher with 
butcher pepper. Okay. It's a thicker pepper. So you take your steak, you want to trim all your steaks to a quarter of an inch of fat to leave it to lock in the mm -hmm. juices, right? So a thicker steak is always better to sear in a pan, sear on your grill at home, and then get it to your temperature in the middle, get the juices. So the key is take your steak out a half an hour before you're going to cook it, let it get to room temperature. Okay. And then the fat starts that's breaking two down. Inches thick, how long do you cook that? Well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take it first and you got to give it love. So you're going to rub in your salts, rub right, all over it, and you got to rub it. You got to massage it like you would I your like beautiful wife, neat. right? Mayor Putin unveiling what he calls an invincible nuclear weapon today. The Russian president claiming they have a type of nuke that cannot be intercepted. He says the U.S. led NATO defense shield in Eastern Europe is, quote, useless. And he unveiled new weapons of war. This is still a developing story, and we will have much more on this inside of America's newsroom today. Stay tuned on that. First, back at home now, reaction pours in after another departure rocks the West Wing. President Trump's closest confidant, the original Trumper, White House Communications Director Hope Hicks has officially stepped down. She hasn't left the White House just yet, but she announced she is leaving. I'm Bill Hemmer. Good morning. That's, that's all that's going on so far today. It's <laughs> 9 in the morning now. Morning, Sandra. You made it to Thursday, yes. Bill. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sandra Smith. The White House says Hicks' departure has nothing to do with a series of issues she has been directly involved in recently, but her resignation makes her the fourth White House Communications Director to leave, and just the latest in a string of White House officials to Step down in the first 13 months of Trump's presidency. Here's what her immediate predecessor, Anthony Scaramucci, had to say last night. She's made out of steel, so obviously she won't break. She's a wonderful person. I'll tell you, she's, she's one of the least malicious people I've ever met in my life. Uh, she's dedicated, she's charming, she's thoughtful, uh, and at the end of the day, she's going to have an unbelievable career. Meanwhile, another big story here. Attorney General Jeff Sessions now speaking out after President Trump called him out over his handling of the FISA abuse investigation. Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts is live on the North Lawn for us this morning. Good morning, John. Morning, Sandra. And if you and Bill want to go grab a coffee, we've got a lot to talk about here <laughs> at 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, just to, about what you were just talking about, about Jeff Sessions. He's going to be here at the White House today for an opioid summit. The president not scheduled to be at that summit, but the president could always do a bit of a drive-by and say hello to his good friend Jeff Sessions. Now, on the Hope Hicks uh, resignation, uh, this is a big one for the president, perhaps one of the biggest that we've seen because she is one of the people, other than family, who's been closest to the president all through the campaign and through the White House. I mean, she used to steam his suits for him while he was wearing them. I'm told that it wasn't any one thing that led to her departure. She's been thinking about this for a while, but she has been burning the candle at both ends for three years, 24-7, 365. Her personal life became fodder for, uh, for the media through no fault of her own recently on Tuesday. She told the House Intelligence Committee that she's told, quote, white lies on behalf of the president. I'm told the president wasn't particularly happy about the fact that she said that. Talk to her about it. Talk to her about the reporting around it. We don't know if that played into her decision. Yesterday morning, she told the president it was simply time for her to go and move on. In a statement, Hope Hicks saying, quote, there are no words to adequately express my gratitude to President Trump. I wish the president and his administration the very best as he continues to lead our country. And from the president, Hope is outstanding and has done great work for the last three years. She's as smart and thoughtful as they come, a truly great person. I will miss having her by my side, but when she approached me about pursuing other opportunities, I totally understood. I'm sure that we'll work together again in the future. No word on her replacement, but one of the leading contenders said to be Mercedes Schlapp. She is uh, currently the director of strategic communications and could likely slide right into that role. Sandra? All right, and on the long list uh, of things happening at the White House today, John, there's another meeting uh, at the White House on school safety. Yeah, and this one, we're not going to see a, a live broadcast of this as we did last week. The president's meeting with some families about school violence. Some of those families uh, will be people from uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas School. Yesterday, of course, the president met with members of Congress. And, and the White House is expected to make some sort of an announcement today. We do not know exactly what form it will take on proposals that the administration is putting forth to improve school and gun safety. Among those proposals, the president will voice his support 
support for the Stop School Violence Act and the Corn and Murphy background checks bill. He's not going to ask for specific legislation. He'll just ask the group that was at the White House yesterday to come up with measures. He will also support raising the minimum age to purchase a long gun that includes rifles and shotguns to 21. He's going to expand a DHS test program to stop school violence. He wants to take that national. He wants to fix the FBI tipster program, encourage states to adopt what are called extreme risk protection orders so that weapons can be taken away from people who threaten to harm themselves or others. And he will encourage arming school faculty and staff. Not quite sure how they're going to do this yet, but it could be through federal grants or federal training or a combination of both. He told lawmakers yesterday at that meeting not to be afraid of the NRA. He says, you're more afraid of them than I am. And already some private enterprise taking steps uh, to, uh, to improve gun safety and keep guns out of the hands of people who might do harm. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods announcing that it's no longer going to sell assault weapons. Uh, the shooter uh, at Parkland bought a shotgun, which was not used in the shooting from Dix. So Dix feels like it's got a personal connection to this. Also, Walmart and Kroger saying that they are going to up the age to purchase any kind of weapon to 21. I've been to a lot of Kroger's and I haven't seen them selling guns. Maybe they're beside the bananas in the produce section. I'm Maybe. Sure. It depends on where you are in the country. All right, John. So there's a report that Jared Kushner's family company received loans after meetings at the White House. What can you tell us about that? Well, the White House itself is, is not commenting uh, on this report today in the New York Times that the Kushner company's got massive property loans worth hundreds of millions of dollars after Jared Kushner met at the White House with the CEO of the Apollo uh, Global Management Group, Joshua Harris, and the CEO of Citigroup, Michael Corbett. Instead, the White House leaving it to outside entities to deny any whiff of impropriety. A spokesman for Kushner's outside attorney, Abby Lowell, telling Fox News, quote, Mr. Kushner has met with hundreds of business people during the campaign transition and in the administration to hear ideas about improving the American economy. He has had no role in the Kushner companies since joining the government and has taken no part in any business loans or projects with or for the companies after that. He has followed the ethics advice he received for all of his work, which include the separation from his business and recusals when appropriate. A spokesman for the Kushner companies, Christine Taylor, told Fox News, in the 33 years Kushner companies has been in business, we have done tens of billions of dollars of transactions and loans with all the top lenders and continue to have a working relationship with them to suggest that Jared, when taking on his role in the White House, has suddenly affected our longstanding relationships or that we do business differently than we have in the past is made up and without substantiation. Stories like these attempt to make insinuating connections that do not exist to disparage the financial institutions and companies involved. There's a lot going on here today at the White House, Sandra, so we'll be visiting with you often. Thanks for keeping track of it all. John Roberts, thank you. Every time I looked up yesterday, there was John Roberts <laughs> <laughs> on TV. Charlie Hurt now, opinion editor, Washington Times, Fox News contributor. How you doing, Charlie? Good morning to you. Let's, Good morning, let, let's start with, a, in a broad sense, the Hope Hicks matter. What is your sense of what's happening inside the West Wing? Well, you know, in, in some sense, it's uh, it's pretty shocking, obviously, because we, uh, we you, you can't think of the Trump administration or the Trump campaign without thinking of Hope Hicks. But on the other hand, it's kind of uh, the least shocking news uh, that's come out of the White House, I think, all year. You know, she's 29 years old. She's been working for him for, for three years. And to say that she's been at the center of it all is uh, quite an understatement. She, she has been at the eye of the storm, literally uh, within arm's reach of the president. Uh, since day one, and then and then long before that, I remember uh, you know covering the campaign uh, it w at its most unlikeliest mm -hmm. uh, moments. There was Hope Hicks always uh, standing yeah. right beside him uh, in her po you know, and I, I, she's a wonderfully poised, um, uh, smart, uh, uh, always keeps it keeps it together. Uh, it, 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 I think didn't it's a pretty impressive, her, Charlie. Let's face it. I mean, she's been there from the very beginning. I mean, but arguably the first Trump staff member. I think we can agree on that. Now, Absolutely. Now, now, listen, Jeff Sessions is in the news. <laughs> um, you've, you've got other things happening on guns. Perhaps there's a deal. Joe Manchin's coming up in a moment on that to make his case. But there are still big issues in this world, Charlie. You look at what Vladimir Putin's talking about today. You look about the problems in Syria and the Middle East. You talk about the ongoing menace with North Korea. There are big things to talk about. And we're talking about a president who is not afraid to go out there and, and grab any one of these issues with both hands, cameras rolling, 
and uh, and deal with them. And you know, we've seen it, uh, seen them do it with guns. Uh, you know, that's been a very impressive thing to watch. Uh, the, 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 those town halls and, and those meetings with lawmakers, we've seen it with immigration. And so it's, it's a high wire act, but you know, this is a president who likes high wires. <laughs> we've seen that. Thank you, Charlie. Buckle you up bet. today, okay? It's early. <laughs> Charlie heard there exactly. in D.C. Thank you, sir. Sandra. Meanwhile, Fox News is learning stunning details regarding the critical moments outside that Florida school while the shooter was still inside. We are hearing deputies responding to the scene were told to stage outside by a commanding officer instead of being allowed to rush inside. Phil Keating is live in Parkland, Florida for us this morning. Phil, the Broward County Sheriff's Office is under fire again. As are a lot of people and a lot of agencies, the Florida Republican-controlled House has now subpoenaed the Broward County Sheriff's Office, the Broward County government, the Coral Springs Police Department, which sent numerous first responders to the school as soon as those 911 calls came in, and the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. The lawmakers aim to examine all aspects of the law enforcement response on Valentine's Day and whether this horrific tragedy could have been avoided. Plenty of flags went up over the years about the suspect, Nicholas Cruz, to the Sheriff's Department, to the school district, and to the FBI, but he was never arrested, and once he turned 18, he started amassing guns. There is a court date dealing with him today, but not related to the shooting, and Cruz won't be there. It's a probate hearing to determine how much inheritance Cruz is due from his mother and father, both of whom are dead. Reportedly, that's worth about $800,000. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, all about comforting the more than 3,000 students who go to Stoneman Douglas High. 95% of them did return to school yesterday. Everyone we spoke with told us it was a nerve-wracking morning, but at the end, they told us they felt better. School principal Ty Thompson sent the kids his, this tweet this morning. Good morning, Eagles. Today, March 1st, is a silver day dismissal at 1140. By the way, I increased the number of therapy dogs. Just yesterday, there were 40 therapy dogs on scene, as well as 150 counselors and a very strong law enforcement presence, which is significant again today. Sandra. All right, as more details come out of what happened that day, nice to see some of those students back in school smiling yesterday. All right, Phil Keating, thank you. Yeah. 11 minutes past the hour now, President Trump says he will be the one to get changes needed on gun safety. They love our country, but that doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. It doesn't make sense that I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun, but I can get this weapon at 18. I don't know. So I was just curious as to what you did in your bill. Yeah, we, you know what I mean? We didn't address it, Mr. President. Well, I think you know why? Because you're afraid of the NRA, right? Yeah, no. That's not all he said. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, the Democrat, was in that room. He joins us next live. Plus, Hillary Clinton unleashing again on President Trump, this time accusing him of surrendering in the face of Russian interference in our elections. Congressman Sean Duffy has reactions. Also, Sandra, an incredible look at being First Lady in the White House. An exclusive interview with a former First Lady, Laura Bush, on a new project about the women of the White House. I think it shows how uh, First Ladies have made such an impact in our country, not just the President's. Uh, but the women. Your Second Amendment rights. Honestly, this is a bill that basically, with your support, it would pass. It um, would pass. That's Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat at the White House yesterday, bipartisan meeting on gun safety. We watched it live here on Fox. Is there a deal to be had? Joe Manchin, the Democrat, is with me now. Sir, how are you doing? And welcome Hi, back. Hi, Bill. How are you? Oh, well, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, a fascinating meeting. Let me come back to that moment <laughs> yeah. here. But well, what do you think can pass that would make a difference, Senator? Well, you know, the bill that we've had, the, the Manchin-Toomey bill, has been out there a longer bill than any other. Uh, it's been vetted. Uh, Law-abiding gun owners have looked at it from all across the country. They know it does not infringe on the right. It enforces and protects the Second Amendment rights, but it basically takes uh, what we call the gun sense into consideration that if you go to a, to a gun show, uh, they should have background checks. So that's a commercial transaction. You don't know that person. You've never met them, you don't know what their intent, you don't know their background. On the internet, you never met the person, you don't even see them. So that makes sense, it's made sense back then, it makes sense now. The president has recognized that. He protects the Second Amendment rights and, and, and as much as I do, but he knows that we have to make progress here and take the crazies out of it. Yeah, does, does that get 60 votes? 
I mean, you, 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 you were there in 2013, you were there in 2015. How come it did not happen then? The difference is this. This is the president today that can make this happen. We haven't had a president before that could, especially with uh, President Obama. After we passed, uh, after we brought our bill up and was going for a vote, the people said, hey, Joe, I like your bill. I went all over West Virginia talking to people, showing them. We broke the bill down, showed them what it did, what it protected, and also the craziness it got rid of, the loopholes. They said, Joe, we like your bill, but we're afraid if that bill passes, President Trump will take more of our rights away. They do not, there's not a person in West Virginia that supports President Trump that believes he'll take the rights away. He'll protect the Second Amendment rights. Do you think West Virginia is any different from the other 49 states? Well, do we're... Do they believe the same? This is one of his strongest states with the strongest support. And if you're talking about rural America, people that cherish their gun rights, cherish their tradition and their culture, uh, he's not going to let that go by the wayside. He'll protect that. Okay. But we've got to get, we've got to make sure when a terrorist puts a, uh, puts a website up, uh, Bill, and they say, hey, if you want to do harm in America, just go to the local gun show and pick up whatever you want. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back inside that meeting. This is, okay. he, he's kind of saying the same thing you said a moment ago. Just yeah. listen here. Watch. I mean, you went through a lot of presidents and you didn't get it done. You have a different president. And I think maybe you have a different attitude, too. I think people want to get it done. Mm. He's you exactly know, right. We, we watch these meetings yeah. now, um, and I know you're aware of that. So there's cameras yeah. in the room. It's never been that way before. Uh, you, you've been in how many meetings with him that we've watched? Uh, that you've watched? Only that's the first one I've been in that, you, that you've watched. Okay. So how many so have I been in that I've been in, able to take, partake in? God, so you've had both then, with cameras and without. Take Absolutely. us inside that room. What is that all about? Here's the thing. The meetings I've been with President Trump are engaging, just what you saw. This is, he, it is what it is. This is the president. This is our president. You can say I like it or I don't like it, but this is our president, which I like from the standpoint of the engagement. I can say, Mr. President, I'm sorry, I just, I can't support or I don't agree on that. And he'll say, I respect where you're coming from, but let's talk about it more. So he pushes you. I like that. It's, it's, the give and take is good. The, the, the point you're making is that he's no different off camera than he is on camera. I don't see that. Everyone's trying to say, well, he's playing to the cameras. I don't see that. I've been in meetings. We've talked about taxes. We had agreement that we needed to do tax reform. We had disagreement on how far you do it or the mandate and limit. We had all those good discussions, okay? But I've seen the same. I don't see the big difference mm. from when I'm talking to him in a meeting, a private meeting, where there's no cameras, nobody, just us, or what you saw yesterday. Last question on that then, Senator. Is the, is the effect of that a more productive government? I think it's off, the, op, the more transparency, the more openness. You can see a person who's willing to engage and talk about it. He's not afraid to say, uh, hey, maybe the people who have supported me before might not like my position, but I think it's where we should go as a country. That's your leadership. That's what you're supposed to do. And that's what he's showing right now. I'm hoping that we can use our bill as a base bill, the Mansion Toomey bill. We'll build off of that. He wants to look at different things and expand.